Good evening, UK Crime Book Club. I'm absolutely thrilled to bits to have Max Sayek with me. Um, it's actually nine o'clock where he is at the moment, so um, let's try to keep him awake for a while. Hi, Max. Hi, How are I, you? I, thanks for having me. I'm great. Uh, it's been a long day, but I, I'm really looking forward to this, and I'm excited. Tell us a little bit about the Witch Hunter. Um, a little bit about the Witch Hunter. Um, well, it's 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 my fourth novel, and it's the the first one that's actually being translated to English and and many other languages as well. So, yeah, it's it's also the perhaps the first uh, traditional whodunit book. Like it's it's a crime mystery book, and with um, uh, I'd say maybe like a little supernatural twists mm -hmm. and a really creepy atmosphere so but it's really hard to tell the you know to explain the plot without uh, it really is i I, yeah. I often say this when we have um authors come on i've always yeah. got so much to say that i can't say exactly yeah so i don't want to <laughs> give away anything and it's i think it's it's best just to <laughs> to, to to read it <laughs> yeah i absolutely agree and some of our members have been reading it as well this week so great um, they're the people that I can talk to afterwards. Yeah, that's great. So just before we went live, we were talking about um, darkness. It's gone. What's it like for you at the moment? Where exactly are you? Well, I'm I'm in Helsinki. Actually, I'm in Espo. It's it's basically just uh, the neighboring city of Helsinki. It's basically a suburb of Helsinki. But uh, the the events in the book take place in Helsinki. That's the capital of Finland. And basically, both Espo and Helsinki, the cities are in the very south of Finland. So, I'd say weather-wise and culture-wise, it's pretty much like any other uh, European, like North European city. It's mm -hmm. not exotic per se, but uh, if you go more up north to Finland, and that's where the Lapland is, and and that's where the snow is, and people many times mix. You know the southern Finland with uh, you know the weather is not always very wintry here, and we don't even have snow all the time, not even the winter. <laughs> and the summers are pretty bright and, and warm. But now, since you were asking about the darkness, um, we do get some dark nights already here in the south. And uh, when I woke up to this morning, it was okay. It was pretty early, uh, like, like five o'clock in the morning. But still, at eight o'clock, it was really dark, and um, then suddenly it gets light. And um, yeah, it gets dark like at, at six or seven again. So right now, I think it's it's just like you guys have, mm. like, more or less. But in a month or two, that dark is all we have. It's just it's just you know it's it happens very quickly, and in a couple of weeks, we only have dark, and and did that last for like two two months. So that's uh, yeah, kind of depressing, mm. but also, you know, the atmosphere is pretty pretty nice. Also, I bet it is. Yeah. I get used to that that amount of darkness for so long yeah i don't think you get used to it and, and in in south like i do i live in south we don't have like 24 7 dark than mm. you actually do have in in lapland when it's when it's let's say november december january you only have is dark and i think you don't get used to it and, and that's why you know i i have no idea how people cope with that no um, but in, in let's say like June, July, August, um, light is all we have. So we don't have nights, really, at that time. So it's really strange. And um, a lot of friends who come over here in, in, in the summer, they cannot sleep because it doesn't get dark. <laughs> so Yeah, that must be just as hard as it being dark all the time, it being so light. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's really exotic. If you've never been here, you know, you know it's, it's, it's hard to imagine, really. Now, you must have answered this question a thousand in the last couple of months, but where did the idea for the witch hunter come from? The idea of, um, yeah, it's basically a book about the witches um, or somebody going after people who they consider witches. So um, basically the idea for the book, uh, because the book starts with a murder that is copied from a best-selling crime novel. And the, the dead body belongs to the wife of the author. So I think that's something, uh, I think it's a creepy start. And I think that's something I'm really afraid of myself. Or that's, that was an idea. I was just super 
Like I, I, I just thought that idea was super creepy. It's so, really creepy. Maria's yeah. face is kind of, I can see it still. I can see it in, right. in my head. It, it's never leaving. No, <laughs> I, have, I have no idea how I came up with that. Mm. I actually had a lot of nightmares myself. I think that the whole thing is from a nightmare of mine, like originally. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, that was basically the starting point for the book. And then I just started writing, I started writing, I think it was like two years ago. And um, yeah, the story just just came nicely around the whole starting point. I've got to tell you, there were parts of it, and I, I won't give anything away. I don't like spoilers at all. But there were parts of it where I was reading and I, I actually gasped. And then there were parts of it that I laughed out loud at little things that people said to each other. And yeah. it's a really, a really good mix of darkness and macabre and lightness as well. Is that really a difficult balance when you're writing something like this? Yeah, um, it's a really good question. I think uh, I wanted to write a really uh, like atmospheric, uh, dark and um, scary book. And, and I always love a bit of humor. I think it's important to have a little bit of humor in a way or two. And um, I think in my books, generally, the, the humor is in the dialogue. So you yeah. have these strange, uh, creepy murders and incidents, and basically how the, the police officers, the, the, the um, detectives, how they just interact with each other. Um, it just have to be, it, you know, the dialogue, like in real life as well, the police, they have their own humor just to be able to cope with the terrible things they see. So that, mm. that's the case also in my books. And yeah, I, I think I'm glad you say that you found it funny at times because that was my, it's been, it's been my intention all the time to, you know, to lighten the mood every, every other page or two, but not to make it funny. Like it, it's well, not a fun, it, it, it's not supposed to be a funny book after all. No, definitely not a funny book, but there were definitely things. Um, so. I was reading it and my husband would be kind of looking at me one minute and see that I'd gone quite pale and then another minute I'd be laughing and he yeah. was quite surprised by it so good yeah I'm glad <laughs> um, that's pretty much what I was hoping for uh, we've got already quite a lot of things that are coming in from viewers <clears throat> excuse me so um Caroline Maston she's uh, my friend Cal she's the other half of the author chat team she says hi to us um, she asks, she hasn't read it yet. She's asking where in Finland is the book set? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much set in in Helsinki, the, the capital. But there's also some scenes or some chapters where um, it um, they are also somewhere else in Finland, like um, a bit far from the capital. And there's um, there's this basically this, this flashback scenes from Venice. Yeah, Italy. and and it's also not. I'd say it's maybe like thirteen years ago. The events that take place in Venice. So yeah, basically Helsinki and Venice, and it's a strange combination. But yeah, that's how it is. So um, we I'll go back to the questions on the stream in a minute. But what inspired Jessica? Oh, she's mm. she's really she's a really strong woman. She has flaws as well, and. Yeah. things that we learn about her and why she's the way she is and she has some really great relationships with all of the um not all of the men in the li her life but most of them yeah and her colleagues in particular she has great relationships with so where did jessica come from yeah it's an interesting question and, and i since i just finished the book too it came out in finland a couple of weeks ago oh so i i learned so much more about jessica you know during the the process of writing the book too uh, so I, I'm just wondering what I can tell you without just giving anything away of the book. Can you tell us when it will be available in England? I really hope, uh, next year for sure, um, I really hope it will be in the spring already, but it might be in the fall, so in a year, I think at the very latest. But um, okay. it's, it's also already being translated to English by by the translator, and I, I hope that Welbeck will... Uh, we pub publish it soon enough. I I think the book turned out just great. It's a bit different from the Witch Hunter, but mm. it's 
yeah, well, you, you'll see, but <laughs> just trying to um, answer the question about Jessica, though, um, I think I think I just wanted to create a, a female, a, a strong female character, uh, like, mm -hmm. uh, because in my previous books, I, I had this 45 year old ex soldier man, uh, who was, I, I think he's a really good guy. And I liked the character, but then when the trilogy was over, I wanted to come up with something really di uh, totally different. Mm -hmm. So I came up with this female detective mm -hmm. and she was a bit younger, 34 years old, years old. And, um, um, really persistent and, um, not that, not maybe the easiest person you could imagine, but a really loyal and she has, like you said, a lot of friends and, um, she's, um, she has some uh, dark past. She has committed a crime that you can read about in the witch hunter. Mm -hmm. and she has also some dark secrets and she has a mental illness and I think that's one of the major like things that I don't underline too much, but if you read the book, you, you figure out that, that she is mentally challenged some, some, in some way, but she can still, still, uh, you know, manage to do her job and, and be normal. But I think I just wanted to create a character who is not perfect in any way, but like not, not flawless because I, I just, I just don't like flawless, you know, yeah. characters of any, in, in, in the movies or in the books, I think it's it's unrealistic and boring. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense, does it? Nobody's yeah. flawless. Exactly. And um, at the same time, the bad guys very seldom are like 100% bad. It's like Dr. Evils. I think that's, um, that's that's a bit boring as well. So I try to include in my characters, I, I, I write, I'd like to think that the, the good guys are not 100% good. They, are, they, are, they have flaws, like you said. And also the, the bad guys are, you know, they have something human in, in them as well. And I really like Jessica. I, I, I'd like to be her friend. I, I wanted to create a, a character that I'd really like to be, could be friends with. And, um, but she is, she's not based on anyone, anybody in particular, I think. I think she might be, might be a combination of several um, women I know. But, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of complicated. I, I don't think I know myself who she's. Are any of your characters based on somebody that you know? The other other characters. Any yeah, any, any of yeah. them. Uh yeah, I just yeah, I I've been thinking about this a lot, and I think all the characters have something, um, some of my abilities or my fears or my wishes or you know phobias or whatever, um. But none of them is is hundred percent me or anybody else. Mm. And yeah, for sure, some of them are. Maybe I think about while I'm writing, I think about how they look. And looks are usually based on somebody I know, or or maybe an actor, an actor, actress. But uh, I I I don't know if if anybody can come up with something like. I think, you know, in all in all the all the all the books you read. Um, that are created by someone, I think they have to base on someone real. I don't know if anybody can come up with a face, <laughs> for instance, like mm. or or you know anything else. I think they're just combinations of of someone you know or someone you want to know. But it's it's a complicated <laughs> question. I I don't know if I if I managed to answer answer it at all. No, you did. You really did. Um... Kaz wants to know what inspired the supernatural element. Um, I'm a huge fan of um, Stephen King, for instance. Mm. I think he's a master of of writing really amazing. I, I think you can call it crime fiction. Not not every book, but mo most of them or, or some of them. Oh. And, he, and he also includes like supernatural elements in a really nice way. Or X Files. I, I was really. I, I was a huge fan. I still am. Mm. Oh, it's a, it's a, I don't know if you, if you know it anymore, <laughs> if anybody knows it anymore, but I think. Yeah, I'm old enough to know it. Yeah. I'm slightly yeah. older than you. So yeah, <laughs> oh, I, um, I used to watch. Yeah. 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 So it's, it was a bit freaky, but I, I really mm. liked it. So, um, I, let's say like a couple of years ago, I never would have guessed that I would 
write a um, a book that has supernatural elements, but then suddenly I just wanted to write one. And I, I like the idea that you are not 100% sure whether it's supernatural or whether it's uh, Jessica's mental illness we're talking about or we're seeing uh, or if it's or, or what what is it i mean it, um i think as a reader you can decide yourself and i think that's that's the beauty of the the story yeah i like that idea kind of ambiguous i like that yeah, um yeah. are your other books going to be translated my other books um the, the three first books i wrote have been translated to some languages but the smaller ones like icelandic and estonian uh, German, though, um, one of them at least, an Italian. But uh, I really hope that if people um, like The Witch Hunter and the next one, eventually they will, you know, translate the backlist as well. Um, yeah, I hope so, but I have no idea how, how it will work out. I really hope to read the first trilogy. That it's would a be, really, a, yeah. yeah so can you give us a clue about it? It's very different from The Witch Hunter, that's for sure. It's, um, I, I by no means, I'm comparing to myself with Dan Brown, but he was um, a really big inspiration for me while I was writing the first three. And I think the books are more alike, like uh, adventure books. Mm. Like they are whodunits in a way with uh, an adventure twist, I like action kind of, books but not um yeah it's it's really hard to explain people really like them over here in finland i think the first one uh, i won the um, the debut whodunit prize award here with the first one but for some reason i don't know uh, maybe the market for such books was was too full but we never got the english um translation right sold so far i don't know maybe that will change you have got some other rights though, haven't you? The TV show is being made. Yes, yeah. The Witch Hunter is being um, made into a TV series in, 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 in the United States, in Hollywood. Um, I'm really excited about it. I don't know what, what, what's going on right now because of the COVID, um, everything is yeah. a bit slower than usual. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really amazing. I was in LA last January and I met the, the team. I met the people and they were all really enthusiastic about it all. So I, I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm very confident that we'll get the TV series mm -hmm. next year. No, maybe not next year. I think they will shoot it next year, but maybe in 2022. So what did your wife say when you um, sold rights to Hollywood? Well, <laughs> yeah, she was, yeah, I, I was, I was happy myself and she was really happy for me. And I, she's mm -hmm. with me to LA a couple of times. We even had the, the our first, you know our boy baby boy um, a year ago when when he was six months old we went to LA just to sell my work so they've been supporting me and we've been there and she was really happy but at the same time you know she and my friends I've been telling that we just have to wait until the show comes out everything can go you know anything can go wrong still you know it always when it's about movies or TV. We always have to wait that we can actually open the TV, see the TV, TV series. Until then, I will just try to be cool and <laughs> not to be too, and you know, we don't, we are not quite there. Not get ahead of yourself. Is that what you mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, my friend T says hello to us both. Hi. She says, um, oh, she's been reading The Witch Hunter this week. She says, um, she's asking where you got the original story from which we've already kind of discussed um <laughs> and Kaz is saying she's going to buy the book just based on the interview <laughs> that's good um she yeah. wants to know what your hobbies are now she's been very excited to see you because um she watched a little clip that we did okay and she kind of said she was like oh yeah he's interesting we need to uh, need to read his book and need to watch this interview Good. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> so what hobbies do you have? What do you do when you're not writing? Um, I just started, basically this year I started jogging. I've never liked running that much, um, but I started it in February and I've been jogging a lot this year. Mm -hmm. Every time when I had some time, I've been, you know, I went for 
a 10 kilometer run. So that definitely is one of my hobbies currently. And I do know what a floorball it's, it's, um, I was going to ask you about floorball because yeah. that for me doesn't translate. I have no clue what that means. You can Google it. It's, it's basically, um, it's like field hockey. Okay. But, but it's played indoors with a slightly different stick and, and ball. So yeah, I think, I think the closest thing you might, you, you might know is, 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 is um, field hockey. I don't know if, if it's even close, but it's it's basically you you have a. It stick. gives us enough of an idea, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but just just Google floor floorball. I think it's floorball, in English, and yeah, that's that's a team sport. So yeah, that's definitely a fun, fun game, and we play it once or twice a week. And then I do some um, yeah jogging, um, floorball, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it right now. I'm some some I, I go to the gym always when I can, but, you know, with the kid and the dog and another kid coming in November, I think I, I hope to, you know, have my hobby still in, in a couple of months. It's, yeah. I don't know, it, I don't have, have too much time right now, currently in my hands. I can't believe that. Yeah, it's crazy. Hopefully, hopefully you'll, um, you and your wife will get time to sleep as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think we will. Um, her parents can always, you know, take care of, of William at some some occasions so we, we, we have help that that's always nice. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um so how do you cope with writing during the dark season? I'm not sure who's asked that. It's come up as Facebook user, but um that's a really good question. Does your do your writing habits change based on light and dark season or well, do you just have the same kind of day? No, I think the um, it's not that dramatic, the the whole dark thing because we're so used to it. And and what I love, what I really like about this, about Finland is that the, the whole country, the people are so we have such a long history with the bad, bad weather, so to speak. <laughs> so wouldn't know about that being a Brit. Wouldn't have a clue. Yeah, well, it's a different kind of bad weather. We have a, I mean, when it gets cold, it gets cold. I mean, it's. Mm have that kind of coldness i bet in uk i probably think we do but actually if we actually were there probably not no yeah yeah i mean it can it, it's not very um it, it doesn't usually get that cold where i'm i live but it can it can get like minus 25 let's say in january february so when it gets cold it gets cold it really yeah. but we have a, such a long history with that so all the houses are really warm we have double windows in all the houses and um basically when it's winter we we work indoors so it's mm. like working in summer it, it doesn't make any difference really so and i do write uh during the normal office hours so it, it doesn't make a huge difference in i you know summer i go nine to five i write nine to five and in winter the same and um yeah i think it doesn't really play a role uh, what comes to writing no, I know you've done a lot of interviews lately. You've done kind of TV. Have you done radio as well? You've yeah. done TV. You've been online. Um, how has that been? Has that been a new thing for you? I've been doing. Yeah, it was maybe four year, five, no, four years ago, two thousand sixteen, when I I wrote my first one or published my first novel. Mm. It became a success here in Finland, like locally, but still. So. Then suddenly I, I was invited to, to the radio and TV and I, I wasn't prepared, but pretty soon, pretty fast, I got used to it. And I've, I don't think it's, I, it's just part of the whole marketing effort. I, I, I was told in the very beginning that um, just have to think about it as, uh, as the job. It, it's, it's a part of the job mm. and it's, it can be fun um sometimes the, it, it's it's exciting maybe it's sometimes even um there's a quite a lot of pressure when you do live tv i just did two weeks ago we did this um music i don't know how do you call it like like a entertainment show where half of the country watches it's like with music and live bands and it's a really really funny format but that's the first time i did live with such a huge 
it was live TV with such a huge audience and I was really nervous and I was sweating, sweating like it was crazy. But I think afterwards, I just, I was happy I did it. I think it was fun. So I'm, I'm pretty used to it. And uh, events like this are just, I think this is just fun, you know, to be, I'm at home, I'm, I'm talking with you. And I think it's, I, I really enjoy it to talk about the books. Well, we absolutely love it. Um, we only started a few months ago. I never thought in a million years I'd be sat on camera interviewing authors like yourself. And I'm sat in my house at my dining table with um, my granddad's mug. <laughs> That's good. So it's, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting how you suddenly get used to it. Yeah, you get. I think you get used to anything, I, I guess. And um, yeah, I can't complain. I just, as long as somebody wants to know about my books, I'm really happy to tell about them. I think there will be a day when nobody wants to know anything about my books anymore. Having read The Witch Hunter, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't yeah, think you I need to worry. So, yeah. You um, might have to worry about people losing sleep. It's very creepy. Yes, I did <laughs> lose my sleep when I was writing the book. So, um, yeah, it was a really interesting experience just writing the book. Were any of the. I, I, I'm hesitant to ask you this because I don't want to give any spoilers. Yeah. Were any of the scenes harder to write than others? You don't necessarily need to say specific scenes, but were some things easier to write? Well, I, I personally, I would find it a bit difficult to write something really violent. Um, I don't really have anything really violent in my books. Mm. One of my, yeah. It, we don't go into detail, I suppose. That's the yeah. One of my 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 all time favorites. Like I don't know. Do you do you know this um, author called Lars Kepler from Sweden? It's um it's actually a couple that writes. Why don't oh, I didn't know Lars Kepler was a couple. Yeah. Okay. I'm 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 actually interviewing them next next week uh, online as well. So um I they I'm I'm a huge fan and and their book are amazing but they're actually also really violent they you know they describe the murders and the killing really um with with, with, the, with the smallest detail so i personally i don't write like that and if you know you kind of hint at things you kind of leave it to the imagination yeah and and i think in the witch hunter i just said it to somebody and i don't even know if it's true but i think that nobody actually dies in the book. Yeah, sure, there are dead people, but they always find them when they're already dead. So you don't see nobody die. Mm, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I think I think I'm I might just remember wrong, but um, and I can't were, think of any grisly kind of. Yeah. Mm, no. It's really gruesome, but it's it's like psychologically scary more. So therefore, and now I'm trying to answer the question you asked. <laughs> I'm really bad at this, you know. But um, and therefore, I think I don't have any 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 anything that's more hard to write than than others because I think the only thing that would be really hard for me to write is is, is something really gruesome, something really violent that happens to you know. Okay, okay maybe maybe with kids, I wouldn't write any anything bad. That would happen, mm. Not not since I've become a father. I think that's yeah. just hard. And I, I understand that that there's a you know there's a time and place for such literature as well, but I, I, I couldn't write myself. But yeah, it's not for you. And that's fair enough. Yeah. I'm just I'm thinking back over all of the crime scenes being happened upon in different ways. Yeah. So you kind of discuss the things that have happened, but you're not right there in the action in the moment yeah and this has happened to be the way i wrote it i didn't plan mm. it but i just somebody because somebody asked me the same kind of question that, 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 that your books are is pretty violent it's pretty scary like crews and murders but but you don't really see the murders happening they are described after mm. okay, they were probably made like this but i think there's a difference i i, I yeah. don't really creepy to read like like Lars Kepler I just read it yesterday the new book and they read it as it happens somebody is being killed as I read it and that's that's a different story so um we've got more questions at the side here 
Um, my friend Lucy, hi Lucy Sampson, has asked, um, did you always want to be a writer? And what do you like to do when you're not writing? So you've touched a bit on your hobbies already, but did you always know that you were going to write? Because you've had some um, different career things before and you've studied different things. So yeah, how did, how did you come across writing? Well, a long story short, I, um, I studied global finance and banking uh, in, in Estonia first and then in Switzerland. Quite different to what you do now. <laughs> right? <laughs> And I, I worked uh, one year long in a bank and then I founded a marketing agency with my friends and we did that for a couple of years and then I did um, consulting and communications and basically every year I tried to, you know, recreate my job in the way that I would do something more creative. Um, however, I, I felt like I always failed i always found myself doing something i didn't enjoy and and something that also wasn't that creative that i w had hoped for. Mm -hmm. um when i was a kid i we did a lot of movies we always had the video camera with my friends and we were always recording movies and i had this dream to become a movie director but then when i grew up maybe I don't know if I ever grew up, but when I turned 18, 19, uh, that's, that's the age you just have to, uh, you know, start to do real, real stuff, um, try to try to grow up. So I, I figured out being a movie director is, it's a pipe dream. So I just, I just, I went to study the financing, which wasn't for me. 2013, 2014, I, I was on a holiday in Croatia and I said to my girlfriend, then girlfriend, my wife, that I will write a book. I will start writing it right now. I will go to the hotel room and start writing it. And I did. I had no idea if it's going to be good, if it's going to be a real novel, if anybody wants to publish it. But I, my, my aim was to make a, a great book that would translate to many, many languages, and that would make a movie in Hollywood. And I, I told her that I will win a, an Oscar. And that was a joke, but every year I, it, it's still like 60 person joke. But still every year I, I, I think if I actually move towards the dream of winning an Oscar, and if not, I try to think why and and what could i do next year so i would be one step closer to winning an oscar but yeah that was that was uh, in a nutshell the whole whole mm. story how i became a writer it became a hit in finland the first book I'm, I'm really um grateful for my finnish publisher they elevated it they they saw potential and they put a lot of effort in marketing it, mm. it's, it wasn't it wasn't just my 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 great writing it was also um their great marketing and sales effort and eventually an agent a finnish female agent elena albeck she's a really really amazing woman she contacted me and she wanted to sell my books abroad and she did so here we are so how did that feel so 38 countries i believe yeah. and hollywood looming as well how yeah. does that feel to know that You've sat and created something that's been so well received for the world. It's great. It's it's like a dream come true. Obvious, obviously, um, yeah. Uh, ne last fall was just crazy because a couple of times a week my agent called me. And now we have France just bought it, UK just bought it, Germany, and now it's being made in a TV series in, in Hollywood, and um, it was just crazy. Um, I can't, I can describe it because that's something I, I, I wanted for so many years, but at the same time, once it happens, you, it brings more like new kind of pressure mm. for you and, and, and you, you are feel very happy for a couple of weeks and then you start, I think I'm, I'm, I'm crazy in a way that after a couple of weeks, I just started thinking. What if the books don't sell in the UK? What if people hate them, hate it? Um, what if I don't manage to write the second book now? What if it, what if it becomes really bad? Um, 
you know such thoughts so and they kind of overrule the happiness i had for for um selling the book to 38 countries i'm still very happy but at the same time i'm just uh afraid of uh everything <laughs> it's it's you know it's it's crazy do you think that kind of pressure helps with completing the next book did it help with writing book two yeah for me and I, I mean i'm really really glad to say it did help me i i, I didn't I have, let's say i have had no idea how it would affect me to have this pressure um the witch hunter was sold 38 countries and the sequel was sold to is sold to 24 countries and it was sold to 24 countries before i had started writing the book even already and so I had a lot of pressure just to come up with a good story, mm. match that witch hunter, and I I wanted to top the witch hunter because I I think I have to get better all the time. So, for some reason that worked out pretty well, and I it, it, the book became really good, and I have had so much good feedback here locally. For it, it's called the Evil's Net, the sequel. And it, it turned out good. And I'm really relieved. I had you know, this, this whole springtime when I was writing. It was, I enjoyed the pressure, but at the same time, I kept saying like, this has to be good. This cannot be bad. <laughs> like, I, I just, I have no, I only got one shot to make two good books in a row. Otherwise, you know, they, let's say in, well back in UK, maybe they will not publish my third effort. So have you started work on the third book in the Jessica series? Is um, it Jessica Nieme? Is that how you pronounce the name? Nieme, yeah. Nieme, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have, I have, I, I actually wrote like four pages. I'm officially starting to write in December. Always when I write the book a year, I always start writing it in December and I finish it in June. So it's six, seven months. But now I, I it happens. I, I started writing a couple of days ago, and uh, yeah. So, do you have like a break in between books? I do. Yeah, it's it's basically when I finish one in June, June I um, then I usually market it, and we do all kind of of, of communications and marketing. And then we do some movies, and we make some movies. I'm I'm involved in a couple of movie movie productions that have nothing to do with my books but that um, are really interesting in a way that I, I can put some effort and, and creative writing. And then I will start usually in December, the next book. And this is now the sixth book. The, the next book is going to be the sixth one. So it, I, yeah, it's crazy how time flies. I just mm -hmm. wrote the first one and now already five and six coming up. Very, very striking covers for your book, which um for anyone who's watching it's just above my head so do you have a say in the covers for it or does somebody else do that um i i was shown the cover way before it was published but um just like in finland and anywhere else it, it's funny by the way that i i've seen i think 12 or 13 different covers of that book. i've seen i think eight i think you you told yeah. me about your instagram and i had a look and there were about eight different covers for different yeah. countries i still think this is the best one the uk version that, that is a really they are all very good though <laughs> yes yes i really love it uh but yeah i think there's now 12 or 13 and they're all different i i, I i'm definitely gonna i'm gonna make a poster mm. where they all are eventually 38 i think they're all gonna be different and and very unique and i i really like the the uk one um but i don't have a saying i i just get shown I, they, they'll send it to me via email. How do you like it? Maybe if I would say I hate it, maybe they would do something about it. But mm. I, 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 I do trust. Let's say if if Wellbeck or you know, the UK publisher mm. are really smart people thinking about these things, they know what works in UK, and they come up with that. So I would be super stupid if I would say I I don't like it. Change it. Um, I'm I'm sure they know what they're doing, and I and I do like that cover. I think it's really amazing. And if you take them all, like you have seen the eight, I think that's really stands out with the yellow. Mm. 
it really does it's really, um, yeah it's really eye-catching yeah and it's so simple that it draws you in yeah exactly yeah i don't know how, how they came up with the yellow color but i i, I do like it i mean yeah amazing really good. <laughs> We've got some um, some more questions for you on the feed. Um, yeah. Kaz wants to know, do you do many author events in Finland? You're not in lockdown the same way we are in England, are you? No, although 90% um, of the of the events are cancelled, though. Um, mm. The summer was pretty normal here in, in Helsinki. Um, uh, all the restaurants were open, all the bars were open, but now they are... There are some new restrictions and, and pretty much all the events um, for over, I don't know, over 100 people are are cancelled. So I don't have two okay. events right now in Finland. We do quite a lot like this online all the time. But, you know, if it wouldn't be for COVID, I would have a lot. We would do quite many tours. And I actually, I was supposed to be this year, I was, was supposed to be in London. I was supposed to be in in US and Germany and Estonia. So, very very many trips have been cancelled. But I think it's not too bad. I think now I have more time to write and um, to be with my family. Yeah, which is lovely. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's the kind of time that um, you've got to make the most of while we have it. We've got to make the most of the good side of it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, to see the bright side as well. Mm. So you've said you've been doing some interviews yourself. Who have you interviewed? Um, usually, when when a really big, well-known author comes to Finland, they always ask other Finnish authors to to do the interview. It's it's always fun. It's a fun experience for me, and it's 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 um it's a fun way to interview and to introduced that some like i was introduced basically for people a couple of years ago when i had the chance to interview lars kepler for instance they mm. came to Finland and we did some we did a tour with them um i i think i haven't that that's the only and still a couple right but they are the only um like international superstar i interviewed myself but if let's say if if, if uh, like a really famous UK who done it writer would come to Helsinki, I would I would volunteer. Hey, pick me. I, I will <laughs> I will do the interview. I think it's really interesting. I have I yeah I would agree wholeheartedly. I think it's really fun to kind of research somebody and then yeah. read the books and then get to actually talk to them. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And especially if you already dig dig them. Like I I think before Lars Kepler came to Finland, I had read five or six of their books so i was already a fan so it was a big thing for me yeah it's definitely fun yeah. um so kaz has asked do you write full time and we know that one um do you find the this is interesting do you find yeah. the translation of your books as accurate as you would like or does translation sometimes take away from the meaning you're trying to imply? And that's from a lady called Alicia Jane. Well, so do you read your book in English? I know you speak perfect English, but have you oh, ever read it in English? Well, thank you. But I, I really don't think that I could ever write in English, like write creative. Um, there's a huge difference between being native and being fluent. I, I guess I'm fluent, but I'm not native and it depends. There are so many words I just cannot come up with. And there are moments where I just, you know, the words just don't just like now. I, uh, <laughs> it's, it's so easy to, to get lost, but I, I, I did read the Witch Hunter, the translation, but I don't think I'm, I can judge if it's a good translation or not. And that's the problem. I think it is. I've heard it is, but I, 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 I'm not too. I'm not good enough in in, in like grammar in, in grammar way or, or in a, in a other sense to say if it's a good translation. So, I think it's a good question. Yeah, for sure. So, what language do you think in? Do you think in, in Finnish? Finnish, yes, definitely. And I think, 
I think it's um, the moment you can actually be funny in, in a language, you can make people laugh. I think that's the moment where you can say you are fluent. And um, I went to German school in Helsinki, like a long, mm. long time ago. So I do speak, I'm not fluent anymore, but I used to be like a, a really fluent in German. I basically, I, I learned German from, from scratch. So, but there was this point when I could see that I could say something that makes people laugh and not because I was, <laughs> my German was funny. That's, that's also a reason people might laugh at you, at you. But um, yeah, I think in English, I, I, I'm really confident when I go out, I have some friends who are from UK here in mm. Helsinki, we go out and we can really be like, like um, we can all, all, all speak English with each other. But I, I think in, in Finnish definitely. And um, there's a huge difference still. I, I don't know, M maybe I could start or try to write a novel in English, but I think it would become not very, not very good. I, I'm, I think I will stick with writing it with, in my native language and I have a really good translator or we have. Mm. So I'm thinking how, um, how I'm surprised that Kaz hasn't put on the, um, on the chat yet that I mustn't be um, fluent in English because I am not funny. I was expecting that from her, but um, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe I am. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, I see. Sorry, that, go on. No, I, I just saw. I just um, I discovered the questions myself just now. I see this easy trigger to do interviews in English. So I think it, that applies to not only thinking and writing, but also interviews. And I have done two. Uh, radios in English, like la in the last month, mm. about, about the witch hunter, and I think it, they were tricky. I, and we also also did one podcast, so it's 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 basically it's fun and interesting, but it becomes tricky uh, at the very moment you cannot find the right words because that doesn't happen in Finnish for me. Yeah, Us no, of course usually, not. Usually, yeah. And it's it's it can be really a scary moment, you know. Second go by, two seconds go by, and you just <laughs> your mind hits blank. And um, yeah, I think I think that's 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 like one of the worst that's worst moments you can have when like on live radio that happens. So therefore, I'm a bit afraid of of you know giving interviews in any other language than Finnish. I think you're doing far better than I do, and I'm apparently fluent in English, but I think I, you're doing pretty I, good. I <laughs> um, I'm wondering, I'm just looking at the, um, I made some notes about the, the different names. So, for example, Maria and Roger and Jessica. Uh, do you use the same names in every country, or do they all have different names in different languages? No, they are all the same. Um, okay. they, they don't localize anything in the books. They have to be, I, I think it's in the contract when they translate the book. They just translate the book. They, they cannot change any places or names. Um, I, don't think, I don't think that applies to the TV series, though. I think they can mm. do whatever they want. Yeah. But if you, yeah, the names or places are definitely the same. Yeah. That surprises that... me, I think, because I think I think of the name Roger in particular as being quite a British, I could be completely wrong, but quite a yeah. British name. Yeah, you, you have, you see Roger, uh, yeah, it's not a very, it's not definitely not a Finnish name, but mm. it's, it's a funny culture. You see a lot of different names. You have many names from Sweden that sound like more like English names and then you have really Finnish names that don't make any sense to anybody other than us. <laughs> My name is not Finnish, you know, definitely not. Um, so yeah, you can have, and, and we, we would call him Roger, like Roger. I'm not even attempting that. I'm not attempting any surnames and I'm not attempting to say Roger in Finnish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, the Finnish last names, they are the most difficult. And actually I've, you know, when I wrote it and while I was hoping that this book will, you know, be translated to English and many other languages, I I picked names that wouldn't be too difficult. I had to take a couple of Finnish, like really, really Finnish names just to make it authentic, but mm. I, 
really picked like Jessica Niemi is not too difficult. I could have picked like a really, really, really um, difficult Finnish name, but I'm glad I didn't. No, I think um, Niemi, I will rem I'll remember that and say it, your name. I, I learned that one quickly, but yeah. yeah, it's quite tricky when you just read anything in another language. So yeah. hats off to you for reading, speaking, thinking in another language is not not an easy task. So yeah. Well, but I think the whole English thing in, in Finland, people pretty much talk English. Everybody is pretty much good in English because I think we learn it at school and then all the TV. I, I used to grow up when I'm 35 years old, but when I was, okay, nowadays we have really, really, um, we have so much we can, like a Finnish uh, TV programs and content we can watch nowadays, like tons. But when I was a kid, the most interesting things you could watch from TV were the American and, and the British TV, the, the movies or, or TV series, and with the subtitles, right? So mm. I think that's how people learn English the best, that they actually watch the movies all over again, and they memorize whatever people are saying in the movies and read the subtitles at the same time so you know what's going on i've tried to do that in other languages i, I, I do not have that skill <laughs> well I, I think you have to do it a lot and i'm talking about years now mm. <laughs> I, the whole childhood and um yeah I, I think it takes a lot of movies and tv shows um, i was i was um brought back to something from my childhood that was mentioned in the witch hunter moomins yeah but yeah. So is that a, a big thing where you are? Yeah, they are. I mean, Tuve Jansson, the creator, is, is was Finnish. Um, mm. We have this like in in Florida, we have Disneyland or Harry Potter World. In Finland, we have this Mummy Land, <laughs> or I think at least two of them. And um, yeah, mummies are from Finland, and I think there's this national pride that we have created something internationally well spread thing and um yeah it's a big thing here definitely At it was definitely lovely to read um uh, read that in the book and to be kind of reminded of my childhood that was <laughs> nice did you watch the cartoons or mm. yeah. cartoons and i do remember reading at least one book we didn't have many of the books well i i certainly didn't yeah but the cartoons definitely they were um yeah they were yeah i think tuve jansen is one of the like most sold Finnish order uh, of all times. Most Until you, so. now you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. Yeah, I mean we're not not too too far back with the uh, with the number of 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 the translations. I think Tuve Jansson had forty something, and we're with thirty eight now. So we're getting there, but uh, still, I think Tuve has sold a couple of million copies already. So I think you have to remember that back then. The, there really wasn't a lot of competition and you're competing in a huge market so really your achievement is much greater well thanks for saying that but i think also um i don't know if tuve Anson had an agent but well, like i said before i had such a great help from 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 my people from from my agent she's the one who you know went to the, all the book fairs and told mm -hmm. how, awesome, how awesome my book was and and i'm you know really grateful to her Obviously, you need a good book, but you also need so much, so much more. And you I, need I, a cheerleader. Yes, it sounds like exactly. you've got one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to go to the um, the feed again because I'm realizing that I'm asking a lot of my questions and not everybody else's. So, <laughs> uh, my friend Kaz is mocking me. She's making fun of me. She's saying that um, she does funny, but I am from Manchester, so. Jury's out to whether my English is good enough. But, um, <laughs> so you are from? Yeah. Manchester. I'm from Manchester, yeah. My so God. if you ever do come to Manchester, I need to come and have my book signed. Yes, for sure. So don't, don't bother with London. Come to Manchester. Yeah. We're much better. I, I actually have relatives in Manchester. Like real relatives. My aunt, sister, my dad's sister. And she, I think she's 85 or something. She's... A bit older. Um, she moved to Manchester in the sixties. Mm. 
she married. But that was a fun time to live here. Yeah, and there are, I think, the, uh, she's called McClintock. No, oh. I think there are 100 McClintocks now, and I, I I don't think I've ever visited them, so it's a, it's a shame. I should. You should. You should come yeah. to Manchester, and yeah. we should have, um, we, we should meet up and I'll sign the book you a pint sounds, sounds good. you can sign the book not me obviously <laughs> yeah, it's a deal. Um, my friend t wants to know has your wife read your books i think you did say that um she has read them yeah she has um she has read them all my, my wife reads quite a lot and she happens to like the genre so yeah she has read them all and uh but that's it's a tricky thing like did you like it and she's always yeah it was great um there's not much anything else she can say. So yeah, she has read them and she has liked them. Um, yeah, I think it's it's pretty unfair to ask her even like, did you like it? Or, oh, I, I ask my husband and um, he'll give me some pointers. I've not written books, but he'll give me some pointers. And then he, um, he, he has no interest in my interviews or what I'm writing. He's just, it's not his thing. He doesn't do fiction, so. Yeah, yeah, well. I think that happens. <laughs> it might it might as well be that my wife doesn't read or she doesn't like crime fiction. I mean, she happens so to like crime fiction. Does she read crime fiction from other countries, kind of UK and America and, you know, everywhere else? She. All right. Yeah. Um, I think she does. Yeah. 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 Um, but I don't know. I'm not quite sure which one she's reading right now. What about you? Do you read other authors from, do you only read crime or do you read everything? No, I read everything basically. I, I, I have this system actually that um, I read one uh, crime novel and then I read one nonfiction. Mm. It can be, you know, no, well, nonfiction of, of some kind and then um, a classic or, or something that has nothing to do with crime fiction. So this is how I balance it. My, my reading um, and what, what's actually nowadays I, I tend to listen quite a lot of books I don't know if you have audio mm. if it's a big I, thing I okay. do yeah only recently I'm a very new convert to audio books yeah uh, one of my friends told me about an Irish author called Cueve McDonnell and his crime books are really funny yeah um, not read by him read by Morgan C. Jones, I believe. I need to check. Okay. But yeah, his books are just brilliant. First, quite dark, but yeah. really funny with it. So yeah. what about yourself? Well, I, I, I listen a lot because we I don't think you do have that in the UK. I, I heard you don't, but we have we have in Finland and in the Nordics, we have like a Spotify for, for books. It's called something else, but it's okay for 15 euros you can listen as many books as you as you want so it's it's kind of crazy but uh or, or read like ebooks e and stuff but mm. always when i go out with my dog or i drive a car or i move somewhere i always have my headphones on and i'm usually listening listening to a book so that way i just it just happened to i think i listen up to 20 books a year just by listening every time I walk around or take the dog out. Mm. But I think it's a different thing here because it's so cheap to, to have audiobooks. And I think you have The Witch Hunter is, is already as audio audiobook as well. Available. Have you listened to any of that? I have, yeah. Actually, they sent me um, some months ago, they sent me a sample of the reader. And I really, I, I, think, I think it's a she. Um, she was really good and I'm... I haven't listened to the book yet. I ha I received a link from the, the publisher that I could do it for free. Yay, so I will <laughs> for sure. But it's it's yeah, it's it's available, so you should check it out. I will um I will absolutely share that in the group. I'll find the link and share that for you. Our hour is up. Thank you so much. Wow, crazy. The that really was... disappeared. Um, yeah. give everybody just a quick recap on the witch hunter. Quick recap. <laughs> that's 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 difficult. But um, you you mean the plot all over again? Yeah, just uh, yeah, a little reminder of what they're going to yeah. um, what they're going to terrify themselves with. 
yeah, yeah, you are going to find it's really creepy. Um, uh, a wife of a famous writer is found dead in her big house by the shore. And it turns out the murder is being copied straight from the best-selling novel of the crime order. That's the starting point, and um, a lot of creepy stuff will follow. It's very creepy. You've had nightmares. I've had nightmares. Yes. It's, night. um, it's such a great book, though, Max. Thank you so much for joining me for an interview. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, and it was really, really, uh, really funny. Really enjoyed it.